make a little quick video talking about PlayStation VR 2 just been announced um, well it's not just been announced we've known about it for a while but they've actually shown the controllers which we'll have a look at in a minute um, but first I wanted to kind of talk about my experience with PlayStation VR um, I was an early adopter bought this at launch PlayStation VR was like it sounded so cool when it when it was announced it's like whoa we're gonna be able to have VR in fucking in our living room so that sold it for me instantly but I actually tried it at Comic Con uh, when I was in a Comic Con I had to queue and get a book of time slot go and play uh, a few games on it loved it absolutely fell in love with it bought it pre-ordered it I think it was about 250 quid when I bought it at launch um, I don't use it as much as I should, but when I do use it, I'm still always impressed with it, and I'm still kind of like, I should really use this more. I think what kind of puts me off is the lack of games, um, and the, the actual setup itself, which I'll talk about in a minute. But for the most part, this was a first, a good first attempt for VR for PlayStation, I feel. Um, and I think um, the second VR sounds even better. So, the biggest problems for me with this was, obviously... The resolution inside the headset was, wasn't was great. I'm hoping it's going to be a much bigger improvement on the PlayStation VR 2. But as I said, it for a first t attempt for VR, it was definitely the cheapest version to, to buy in and experience VR. Um, the headset itself is really comfortable, really easy to use, really easy to put on. Um, unfortunately, it does you do sweat a lot in there, so the, the rubber is kind of coming away and there's flaky black bits all over the carpet, which I'm going to have to hoover up. Um... The tracking and everything works perfectly. I think it works better when you turn the lights off, but when the lights on, it still works great. Obviously, it tracks your, uh, your the lights on the front here and the lights on the back. Um, but the the things that I didn't like was, like I said, the resolution and the wires. There's too many wires for this. There's there's so many wires, um, and the setup was an absolute bastard. Um, and you had to swap the cable around the back, and it just would have been so easy if it was just one cable plugged into the PlayStation which I'm happy to confirm is what's going to be implemented in the second PlayStation VR headset. Um, another thing I didn't really like was the games. The games... I'm going to talk a bit about the games. The games, for me... Obviously, the games are a huge part of PlayStation VR. There is a lot of tat when you look at the PlayStation VR on the PlayStation Store. There's a lot of stuff on there that just you could tell somebody kind of made it in a weekend... Um, but there's some stuff on there like Beat Saber. My girlfriend's really into Beat Saber. She's just bought um, Moss. Um, she likes games like that. Um, she's actually just bought Moss, and it's just I just told her the told her yesterday that if you waited a bit, we would have got it for free because PlayStation have done that um, play at home list of games, and there's about four or five VR games in there, which is good. But we'll talk about that again later. So the, v the VR games always seem to be these games where you stood in one position and you can't move. Or you are sat in a you know a rail shooter like um, Until Dawn, um, A Rush of Blood or whatever it was called. And that was a great game with the shooting and the mechanics and you're going over the, you know, you're in like a roller coaster. It did feel immersive because you're actually sat down in real life whereas in, in you sat down in the game. Games like... Um, that X-Wing, the latest X-Wing Squadrons game that came out from EA, that was amazing. They actually re released a demo of that when Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, released. And there was a, a X-Wing VR demo, and I actually streamed it on this channel. Um, it's also on my YouTube channel. And I, I, kept, I remember saying in the video, this would be amazing if they did a full game of this. And they did. Um, my favourite VR game for PlayStation VR is Skyrim. I think Skyrim VR is so immersive. You are you you are in you're in that world. You don't ha you can use the move controllers, but you can just use a bog standard dual dual shock. And you can move for you move exactly you can play exactly like you would in the in like when you're playing it offline. The only difference is you can actually look around and look around corners and stuff like that and it's so fucking great. And I kind of think that they're the kind of games that need to that they, they need to go with moving forward. Alien Isolation VR would be amazing. Um, Fallout VR, Doom VR. There was a Doom FVR, um, which I thought was really poor. It was one of them games where you had to use the move controllers, I think, or maybe. But you had to teleport, so you had to move forward. You had to move forward, you had to look where you wanted to go, teleport, stand there, shoot the demons. Then you had to move. 
to teleport and there was this weird thing that you could do with the right stick to kind of move yourself in a certain um, a certain frame to stop people from feeling sick. There's actually one game that I played called Here They Lie for VR and I absolutely, f- it was the worst game I ever played. It looked awful, it made me feel physically sick, I felt car sick, um, that sickness when you get, you know, when you travel sick, it was awful. So there's been a few games where I've actually felt ill, um, but not all of them. Um, the recent, most recent game that I've played on VR is Hitman VR. I actually streamed some of it on this channel again. Um, that was great. I loved it. It was amazing. Um, the distance between the VR that you need as well, I think they could maybe try and shorten that and sort that out. I know there was a, a lens you could buy to put on the PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation VR headset camera. You could put the lens on the camera and it would shorten the distance between you and the thing. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find it. I couldn't find that, so I couldn't buy it. But I've heard that worked pretty well. I'm assuming the next PlayStation VR will work with the PS5 camera, which I've already bought, um, and I'm hoping it's going to be backwards compatible with current PlayStation VR games. I can't see it not being. I'm assuming it will be. But the games for me was where it kind of let itself down, and like I said, it's a good first attempt, and I'm really pleased that the they're, they're gonna bring out a new PlayStation VR headset and they're going to continue to support it and it, the games are going to get better and more immersive uh, from what it sounds like when we look at this controller in a minute. But my experience with VR has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, I think people should really try it out before they criticise it. Um, it's all, you know, it's one of them things where it's it's easy to, to look out, you know, when, you, when you're outside looking in. But until you've actually put it on and, and experienced it for yourself, it's just mind-blowing. Um, but the criticisms are valid. Um, the, the, the setup's awkward. Um, the games are kind of you know the the lackluster. Um, I think you know get like I said, it games like Alien Isolation, Fallout, and Skyrim. And, and Skyrim is the for me Skyrim and that X Wing game is like the pinnacle of VR games for me. Um, and I just think horror games would be amazing, like Amnesia. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll get games like Half-Life Alex and stuff like that. So, let's have a look at the actual headset itself. Um, so, these are the controls. <coughs> uh, these are the controls there. As you can see, you've got um, two analog sticks on each controller. There's... Um, Buttons on the back, there's fingerprint fingerprint technology. These circular things are actually like motion sensors that let you kind of pick up stuff in the video game. Um, but here we've got uh, an X button, circle button. I think, that, let's have a look at the better picture actually. So here's the best picture. So the left controller, obviously you put your hand through the circle and grip it. We've got a share button there. There's a left analog stick, there's square and triangle. Underneath will be the uh, the triggers, and then on this one we've got the options button, the left, sorry, the right um, analog stick, circle and square. So they look pretty comfy. Um, you can also see on the back there, there's one of the triggers, and I think that's some sort of fingerprint technology, I'm not too sure. Um, or some sort of tracker. But it looks good. They look like they've gone for like the HT, uh, I said that again, the HTC Vive. The Oculus. It looks like they've gone down the Oculus route. They've kind of um, borrowed heavily from that. So it looks pretty good. Um, stronger immersion with adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, finger touch detection and more. Now haptic feedback, if anyone hasn't got a PlayStation 5 yet, haptic feedback was uh, is one of the next gen things I think about PlayStation 5. Um... It curr currently, I'm using it on um, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, and it kind of, the triggers vibrate, and you can pull the trigger down, and it actually clicks like you're actually pulling the trigger on a gun. They work really well. Um, they don't click, they kind of like pull in slowly. It's really strange. Another game it works really well was Astro's Playroom. Um, you could actually feel Astro Bot, like when he's, when he's walking on metal, you could feel it in the controller. When he walks from metal to sand, you could feel that kind of tension. Um, he uses a bow and arrow in that game as well, and you could feel the drawback when you pull in. When you pull the L trigger in, you could feel it. It was very tense to pull. Um, and haptic feedback is certainly a thing that I think should be on all uh, all consoles. I think Xbox actually did a survey asking people if they actually thought, you know, if they, if they were interested in haptic feedback. 
Um, so I'm hoping that'll get implemented on the Xbox because when I do jump from playing a PlayStation game like Black Ops or something that uses haptic feedback and then I go onto the Xbox and the Xbox controller's in many ways more comfier than the PlayStation 5 for me. Um, but I do miss that vibrating triggers so it's definitely something that I've kind of once you've experienced it I don't think I could go back um, so yeah so we've got the design this is all on the PlayStation blog by the way and the link's there if you want to check it out um, you can read up on it um, but yeah it looks pretty good I'm excited about it features um, adaptive triggers so we're here uh, each VR controller left and right includes an adaptive trigger button that adds Palliable tension when pressed, similar to what's found on the DualSense controller. If you've ever played uh, a PlayStation 5 game, you'll be familiar with the tension in the L2 and R2 buttons when you press them, such as when you're drawing your bow to fire an arrow. When you take that kind of mechanic and apply it to VR, the experience is amplified to the next level. Haptic feedback. The new controller will have haptic feedback optimized for its form factor, making every sensation in the game well more impactful textured and nuanced uh, when you are tra traversing through rocky desert and trading blows and melee combat you'll feel it, feel the difference magnifying the extraordinary visual audio experience that's so central to vr for oh, sorry finger touch detection uh, the controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the areas where you place your thumb index and middle fingers this enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay Tracking, the VR controller is tracked by the new VR headset through a tracking ring across the bottom of the controller. Uh, action buttons and analog sticks. The left controller contains one analog stick, um, the triangle and square buttons and grip button, L1 trigger and L2 create button. The right controller contains one analog stick, the cross and circle buttons are grip button R1, the trigger button R2, um, the options button. The grip button can be used to pick up in-game items Sorry, in-game objects as one example. So this, for me, is just kind of going to open up the door for... Um, it's kind of going to open up the door for, for more immersive games. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, Half-Life Alex came out for the Oculus. And, every, and I think it was, like, up for a Game of the Year award. And everyone was saying how good it was, and it was amazing. And we've had games like that similar but not as like well not not similar I'm, I'm thinking of games like job simulator but the only difference is with job, job simulator is you stood in one position you're not moving around but job simulator had you kind of like picking stuff up and throwing them whereas half-life alex was like obviously it's a totally different game but you could still pick stuff up and open doors and you could like you know put put toilet roll on on a toilet rack um and you could move around and it just looks like with the controller, you're going to be able to do all them things and pick up at the same time and move your arms around whilst using the, the joysticks to move around. And I just think that's going to create this kind of this more immersive game. So, so like, so you could play Skyrim on that and it's like the move controllers and the dual sense mixed together in one. So I think they're going to be very pricey. And I'll be honest, I think this VR headset is going to be extremely pricey. Um, but... I think it's going to be worth it. I've got a really big catalogue of VR games. Um, there's also five VR games that I'm going to talk about in a minute that we're going to get for free for this uh, play at home thing. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited. PlayStation VR is just it's just great. Um, it's had its troubles. I've definitely seen it, you know the awkward setup. But once you actually get the headset on and you start playing the games and you're actually playing like Skyrim VR is such a great ex great example for what a VR game can be and I know Skyrim's like 100 years old now but I'm actually replaying it on play, uh, the Xbox Series X because it's had the 60 FPS boost um, and it's really really good it's a good game it's a shame that the PlayStation VR version was separate to the special edition I would have liked it if they just brought out the special edition and you could play it in VR or not VR. Um, and the cross save would carry over. Like it's just one save and you could actually play it in VR. Or if you if your eyes were hurting or if you couldn't be bothered playing it in VR, you could play it normally. That's something that I think should have happened. And I probably would have played Skyrim VR a bit more if I could actually take it off and go, right, I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have an hour's break. I'm just going to play it with the controller. Right, I feel a bit better now. I'm going to play it with VR. And you could play it through that way. And I'd play the whole game again like that. But the fact that it was just VR 
And it's a big ask to ask ask a player to play a game like Skyrim in VR. Skyrim's like a game that is so big and so long, um, but it's it's what could be. Um, and maybe when this VR headset come when the, when the PlayStation VR headset comes out and the PSVR two comes out, I'll maybe revisit Skyrim because it might be implemented with the, with the controllers better. It might be comfier. It might not be. It might be a better you know a better. Uh, Better resolution in the headset. <coughs> so I'm excited. I mean, I'd love to see games like, like I said, Alien Isolation would be awesome in VR. Um, Half Life Alex, if they could bring that, bring that over, that would be awesome. Because um, there's better, I think there's better games on the on the um, Oculus. Um, the only problem with the Oculus is you need more space. I'm kind of hoping that they're just going to keep it to the PlayStation Five camera. Um, but like I said, the original PlayStation VR, not without its flaws, but definitely. Uh, a good foundation for VR. Um, I would recommend anybody ex- getting VR. I would obviously wait now. I would say to people if they're thinking about getting VR, probably wait for this new VR headset. Um, but this was... I'll always remember this. I'll always have fond memories of the PlayStation VR. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do with it. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Um, very excited to see what they do with it. I think it looks comfortable. Obviously, they're wireless. I'm hoping they're going to be wireless. You're just going to be able to charge them. That'll be even more, you know, give you a bit more freedom. Um, but yeah, I think it looks sleek. It looks sleek. The the setup looks easier. Um, I already know that the PlayStation, the next PlayStation VR headset is just going to be one wire. So it's going to be one wire running from the headset. You plug it into the PlayStation 5 and away you go. Um, and I think this is really what... the he- this, this, this second headset... This second version of PlayStation VR is really what PlayStation V, the first PlayStation VR, should have been. Um, it's almost like the the first version of the PlayStation VR was almost like a beta test. But I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I don't regret buying it. I don't regret um, supporting it. I'm just really pleased that PlayStation aren't just giving up on it and being like, right, okay. I mean, obviously, I don't have the numbers, but it must have. It must have sold well. It must have had some sort of support or. Otherwise, they would have they would they would just scrap it all. So I'm very excited. I don't know when it's going to come out. I don't think it says in here. Uh, there's still much more to share about the next generation of VR on PlayStation Five. Yeah. The design teams have uh, collaborated to build our new VR controller from the ground up, with the goal of making a huge leap from current gen VR gaming. We're thrilled with the controller we developed, but what matters now is how game creators will take advantage of the features to design uh, the next generation VR experiences. Prototypes of our new VR controller will be in the hands of the development development community soon, and we can't wait to see what ideas they come up with and how the controller helps bring their Im- Im- imagination to life. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think this is a great, great n- bit of news, um, certainly for somebody like me who's, who's adopted um, VR. Um, I'm definitely going to continue supporting it. Um, I've actually got my PlayStation 4 Pro set up, and that's that's just exclusively a VR machine now. Me and my girlfriend play on that all the time. Um, we play like all sorts of games. Um, there's, there's a, the latest one we've been playing is Don't Talk. Don't talk, and don't don't talk, or you explode or something. Where you've basically got to like put the VR headset on. Um, and the person in the VR headset's got this bomb, and you've got to defuse it. And the person on the outside's talking to them. It's quite quite intense. A bit of a recommended to me by a, um, my friend Sean. Um, but yeah, it was a really good game. But there's some really good experiences on there as well. I've heard, and this is like now we're getting into this other bit of news, um, which is the Play at Home 2021 update. Ten free games to download this spring. Um, you don't need a PlayStation Plus subscription for any of these. These are just ten free games that PlayStation's given you because of COVID. I'm assuming because you know. And this is nice. This is nice. This is nice. Nice thing of nice. Nice. This was nice of them to do. They didn't have to do this. They didn't have to give us anything. Um, I've seen people complaining about this, and I just think, just say thank you and move on. Don't be so ungrateful. PlayStation didn't have to give us anything. Um, I've also seen people saying, "Oh, this is them trying to be Game Pass." It's not. Uh, Game Pass, you need a subscription. This is for free. This is actually just free games. Um, you know, I I already own Abzu. I already own The Witness. I already own Subnautica. Um, I I don't have Res, Moss, Astrobot, Paper Beast, Tri- uh, Thumper, or this gun game. 
Gungan, Gungan, Gungan. Um, and also Horizon Complete Editions coming as well. So this is just something that was free. This is just something that PlayStations just give people for you know just out of you know kindness, um, because people you know they know that people are at home in lockdown and bored. Um, and it's it is probably something to do with the the amount of announcements that Xbox has been making lately, but this is what I mean about competition being good. They've just come out with these you know these games, um, so there's Res, which is like I'm assuming a, a rhythm game. I don't know if I think that might be on VR as well, compatible with VR. Abzu, I think, is from the makers of Journey. I might be wrong, but I've played Abzu. It's a beautiful game, um, really colourful, amazing music, just. One of them really awesome art get art style games. The Witness is a puzzle game, obviously, which I've I've gotten played and it's very challenging, very awesome game. Never played this. I've got Subnautica. Subnautica is like a, um, it's like a survival, uh, a survival game with with like horror elements where you've got to you know go underwater and build your base and there's monsters in the sea and everything. Moss is the one that the girlfriend just bought. She got it on sale. Um, she's a little bit pissed off because she could have got it for free, but never mind. Um, that's supposed to be a good VR game. The one I'm most excited about is Astrobot's play um, rescue mission, and that's just off the back of Astrobot's Playroom because Astrobot's Playroom was amazing. Um, this is a VR game. I've actually seen this being played. Um, there's actually on the PlayStation. I'm sure there's a demo of it actually, where you actually you you you, you look down at the controller with the VR headset on, and you can flick the flick the touchpad and you flick out Astrobot and you can use him to use that as a catapult and it's a very very interactive demo uh, and they just made a full game out of it so I'm very interested in playing that's the, that's the one I'm looking forward to the most um Paper Beast is another one that has um people say is really good I don't know what it's about but that's supposed to be a really good VR game as well and Thumper is like a, a, a rhythm game again so these are just some games that PlayStation give you for free um you know don't look a gift horse in the mouth um, if you've got them, fair enough. I mean, Bethesda just dropped twenty games on Game Pass, and I think I own um, about seventeen of them. Um, but I'm still excited that people are still going to be able to play them, and people are going to be able to experience these new games. And hopefully, we'll get a bit more people playing Dishonored, and we'll get a Dishonored Three uh, further down the line. Who knows? Um, also, with that as well, we're actually going to get. So you got Abzu. Enter the Gung Gungian, uh, Res Infinite, Subnautica, The Witness, Astrobot Rescue Mission, which I'm very excited to play. Uh, Moss, it's a journey reference there, I think. Uh, Thumper, Paper Beast, and in spring, we're actually going to get the Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition with all the DLC. Um, <coughs> and I remember. On the podcast, me and Sean were talking about this, and somebody, uh, well, not specifically about this, but I remember Sean was saying something about somebody ordered Horizon and they, they, they couldn't get a refund for it or something, and now they've released this. So maybe that's something to do with that. Maybe they were like, oh, we can't give you a refund because, I don't know. They took, I'll have to go back and listen to that episode, but I'm sure there was something about Somebody bought Horizon and it, it it had been taken off the PlayStation Store and he, he had to pre-order it again or was told to pre-order it again or something. Um, and obviously if he didn't, he's going to get it back for free. But if he did, he'll be pissed off, I think. But but yeah, um, really exciting time f for games at the moment. I think this has been a really strong week for games news. Uh, a lot of um, game announcements yesterday um, for PlayStation, a lot of indie games. Uh, Disco Elysium is actually coming out at the end of the month. That's supposed to be a game that's really good as well. But PlayStation VR headset 2 and new controllers um, looking really good. I'm quite excited to, to play them. Um, like I said, it's nice that they're just going to carry on supporting VR. I'm going to support it if they're going to support it. Um, so I'm very, very excited. Um, very exciting bit of news there. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave a follow, leave a like. I'm obviously going to upload this to YouTube as well. Um, you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to like. Obviously, if you want to, fair enough. Um, that's great. If you don't, also great. You know, There's plenty of other channels out there that are better than this, more professional or whatever. This is just my thoughts. 
my opinions and my experiences with PlayStation VR. Uh, I'm going to go now and play. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to play. Um, going to go and play something and uh, see you again on the next one. I am actually streaming again on Friday. Um, Friday I'm streaming on Friday Friday night I think. Um, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night I think I'm going to do a fuck because I need to catch up. Obviously me and the girlfriend have been on holiday this week. We've been spending a bit of time together. Um, so yeah, more streams coming. You can actually check my streaming schedule. It's on my channel, my Twitch channel now. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Pit My Shed Plays. Um, or you can subscribe to me and like my videos and check out the podcast on YouTube, um, which is at Pit My Shed Plays uh, again. Um, and yeah, take care of yourselves. All the best. Um, great news. Great week for gaming news. Um, what a great, great time to be a gamer. I absolutely love it. Um, and we'll see you again on the next one.